The boat stability criterion is a uh, subset of the frequency response analysis techniques that we're learning in process control classes. And the purpose of it is to allow us to um, very quickly determine the stability as well as the relative stability of some kind of given process transfer function. And uh, to begin our discussion, we'll first take a look back at uh, this term right hand plane zeros that uh, we love to throw around. And so um, we call them S. So what happens is if we examine the real and imaginary plane, um, when our poles uh, exist on this imaginary axis, our system is on the verge of instability. And um, as recall, a complex number has the form uh, of some real part R plus an imaginary part I times uh, the uh, J, which in our case is equal to the square root of negative one. Um, so in this case here, when we've got uh, our poles on the uh, imaginary axis itself, this right hand part is equal to zero. And we will therefore let S, the poles, just be equal to I times J. And um, in uh, frequency response analysis, uh, this uh, we just let equal to omega times J, where omega is the frequency that uh, our input is oscillating about, uh, causing perturbations in our output. And so uh, what typically happens is you'll be given some kind of transfer function G of S. And so the first thing you'll do is you'll plug in um, S equals J omega. And um, so to kind of work through a generic example, uh, let's just consider a first order system such as the following where we've got G of S is equal to some process gain K divided by tau S plus one. So we plug in S equals J omega. So G of J omega is equivalent to K over tau times J omega plus one. The next thing we're going to do, um, so that was step one. Step two is to rationalize, rationalize um, G of J omega. And so to do that, we multiply by the complex conjugate. And uh, the complex conjugate here, if we had R plus I J, the complex conjugate, commonly denoted as like star, sorry, uh, would be equivalent to uh, R minus I J. So in this case, we can recognize tau and omega as I and R as one. And so multiplying this term by the complex conjugate would just be minus tau J omega plus one. And we would multiply the uh, numerator by the same term. And uh, when we multiply this out, we'll recognize how, and sorry, this is getting messy, but um, G of J omega is now equal to, um, we would have minus tau squared times minus one times omega squared plus one, I'm sorry, um, yes, plus one in our denominator, and then we would have uh, k minus k times tau j omega in our numerator. And so we can see the real part here, as well as the imaginary part, which would be um, all of this stuff, <laughs> sorry, um, in uh, this term. And so the point is, at the end of the day, we have broken up g into um, some real part plus some imaginary part i times j. And as we'll recall in our previous frequency response analysis discussions, um, we can now determine what um, the magnitude of g is or the amplitude ratio. Uh, and that is equal to the square root of r squared plus i squared. And um, the phase lag or phase angle um, of g uh, is equivalent to the inverse tangent uh, of i over r. And so 
um, recalling these two terms and now applying it to the situation in which we have the imaginary part um, of our poles, uh, existing, our poles existing on the imaginary plane, um, we, things begin to uh, get a bit more interesting. So if we analyze the open loop transfer function, uh, where we've got an input, some transfer function G, and this G can sometimes be like the controller times the process transfer function. Um, if we were to consider this as an open loop and write our characteristic equation for it, we would arrive at um, 1 plus G must be equal to 0 as our characteristic equation, so we would have 1 plus the product of all of the transfer functions inside of our loop, which in this case is just g, is equal to 0. And so at this limiting condition, when s is equal to j omega, which is above here, um, we know that g, the magnitude of g specifically, must be equal to minus 1. And so um, what that tells us is that this when the amplitude ratio of G, um, or sorry, so it tells us that um, G by itself is one and then the magnitude of G must be one. So uh, the, the takeaway from this is that the amplitude ratio um, of G must be less than one, and this is the open loop system, uh, for our system to be stable. And in addition to that, if we analyze the inverse tangent of i over r, uh, in this case, i is equal to 0, and r is equal to minus 1, and so what we would have is a tan inverse of 0 over minus 1, which is equal to 0, uh, tan inverse of 0, and tan inverse of 0 is equal to minus 180 degrees. And so this minus 180 degrees is called the critical phase angle, or um, critical frequency, sorry, critical omega, um, and it's denoted as omega sub c in the textbooks. And um, so now with these two pieces of information, we can begin to ask, um, how do we actually use any of this to determine whether or not a system is stable? And so what the Bode stability criterion tells us I'm sorry for rewriting this, but um, it tells us that if if um, if G open loop is proper, meaning the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, and uh, there exists only one. I'm sorry. There exists is actually the backwards e in math. There exists only one um, critical frequency, and there exists only one um, gain um, phase gain crossover frequency, which um, I'll define in a sec. Um, then, if the amplitude ratio which is the magnitude of G open loop evaluated at our critical frequency is less than one. Uh, G is stable. And um, this is the necessary and sufficient condition. And so um, this is a little uh, hard to digest, but um, it is more straightforward than uh, what it looks like. So what you typically get with, or what you always get with Bode um, or Nyquist plot diagrams are these two plots stacked on top of each other. The first one will tell you how the amplitude ratio of the open loop transfer function is a function of omega. And um, these are log scale, so um, this will be a log of that and log of frequency 
And then this bottom axis here uh, will be equal to your phase delay or phase angle and how it is a function of the frequency. And so your phase angle will have some value from zero to minus 180, which is the one we are very interested in. And um, on the top plot here, we'll have some kind of function that looks like this. And on this um, bottom plot here, we can have many shapes depending on what kind of process transfer function we're looking at. But the point is what this term here is telling us in this Bode stability criterion is that um, to determine where omega c is, the first thing to do is look at this bottom plot here, find where 180 is, look at what omega is when our phase angle is 180 degrees, and this corresponds to what our critical um, phase is, frequency, and so to draw arrows to kind of keep track of this stuff so we go from here to here and then we go vertically up into this plot here and then we look over to the left we see if the um, value here is less than one so if we got a value of 0 0.5 then um, we could conclude that uh, our gain our, our controller is stable um, and so I can elaborate more on this in, in better examples later, um, but this is just kind of a general introduction. And so what you'll find also is that if we change k, so this will be like k is equal to 2. Um, if we had a higher gain, um, this uh, plot of the log of the um, amplitude ratio or the magnitude of g versus the log of the frequency uh, will be slightly higher. And so um, if we had k equals 4, perhaps, um, existing here, and this point was found to have a amplitude ratio of 1.1, we could conclude that um, g is stable if our process gain is 2, but if we make our process gain 4, it becomes unstable. And so um, we can get deeper into what it means to be stable and all these uh, relative terms um, in a, another video, um, but this kind of wraps up the introduction to the Bode stability criterion um, and how we are deriving it and the conditions involved. Uh, I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching.